Muy buenos días y muchísimas gracias a Zero Project. Hello everyone and thank you very much Zero Project for inviting me to moderate this um, strategic alliance conference about uh, mobility and work for uh, disabled people. I work in the lab of the Inter-American Bank of Development and the our work is to identify innovating ways to accelerate the inclusion in Latin America and the Caribbean. We want to leverage innovation because we are sure that it is very important to go from linear trajectories to trajectories that are exponential to be able to reduce the gaps that persist in our region. And as I mentioned, uh, BID Lab is the inclusion lab of the group BID, and it's composed by the BID group that works with the government and by BID Invest that provides investment for the sec for the private sector. Being part of this group gives us a big strength to be able to act as articulators in alliances that are strategic and innovator, innovative to be able to uh, construct, build with different players, civil society and others. As a group, I wanted to tell you that we have defined a, a 2025 vision that contemplates five priorities. On the one side is to foster that there is a lot more integration at a regional level and also the development of a digital economy and all of the skills that are needed for that. The work with SMEs to be able to uh, recover economy in this pandemic context, also support against climate change effects and everything that is related to initiatives, uh, uh, gender and diversity. Where we have included other people with disabilities. The people that are more vulnerable are the ones that have the biggest problems. So the impact, the transforming uh, impact has different uh, areas. On the one side, we need to reach a lot of people to be able to have substantial uh, changes in their lives and to create economic um, opportunities for new markets. And why am I talking about development of new markets? Because that is going to allow us to generate employments that are of better quality, improve uh, productivity and access to products and services for the most vulnerable um, communities. We do all of that, all of that through three pillars, financial, financial pillar, knowledge and connections. And specifically, this is related to what uh, has us today here. We want to capitalize this um, articulation in the private, the public sectors, the civil society, so that we can facilitate the replication of these innovative solutions that we want to identify. These are conversations that have arose in, in panels such as this one that allow us to have these connections that are strategic and that are going to allow us to have work inclusion in our region. Aligned with that vision, we're also um, sure that technology today is our big ally to be able to improve conditions of life and, con and inclusion of people with disabilities. This is very important in the current context because the pandemic, as I was saying, has made it really evident that there are important gaps in Latin America and the Caribbean from a long time and that affects the vulnerable uh, population, but also the people that are disabled. We're going to try to keep on generating this strategic alliances because including people with disabilities is not just an, a moral imperative that we all have as an obligation in society. We also have an acquired right that is well known and we have international uh, right that also generates value. People with disability uh, represent about a 13% of the population in Latin America and the Caribbean. So that's 80 million people. And the costs of exclusion are very, very significant. But more significant than that is the benefits that it could generate to include economically the people that have disabilities. 
A study that we carry out in Chile, Costa Rica, and Mexico estimated that if we included actively the people with disabilities in the work market, the uh, GDP of the countries could increase in a two to a three percent. So this is very significant. Our studies also show that disabled people have uh, less opportunities to access to employment, and those that do achieve that in general have less income and high levels of informality. To be able to improve work inclusion of people with disabilities, we need to work not only on the development of new skills, but also in improving the offer. And we are going to do this from three approaches, from the companies that need to incorporate adjustments so that this inclusion is actually effective, the public sector so that they uh, consider this, uh, this uh, people to be able to design public policies, the service providers for, uh, for those companies to understand disabled people, their characteristics and their needs. So indefinite, we need to work on articulating this ecosystem through good alliances. And we need to contribute so that employers and governments and people with disabilities and all of the network of services that are part of this ecosystem can visualize the opportunity and they can generate an economic value and social value for our countries. And I wanted to share with you some examples that uh, we're supporting and that we have supported in this aspect because we have an initiative with uh, Foundation 11 and AMA and INSERTA that is working in Costa Rica and Ecuador and in the Dominican Republic. Um, they also have supported from the initial boost um, what we have been doing in Colombia. I'm not going to extend too much because our panelists are going to elaborate more on uh, the pact of productivity. Now, I just wanted to say that it is very important to have a vision of an ecosystem and to try to boost the development of training programs that um, actually uh, help social and, and work inclusion in, uh, in the digital area and the, in the computer area spe specifically, and also in other areas. We have a lot of information about this and we need to identify improved technologies that are going to make inclusion faster and, and, and easier so that people can work in their different um, areas. These models are based on alliances that are going to strengthen not just the offer of uh, inclusion, but they also work with the demand so that it is a demand that it it is inclusive through the accompanying of, of the work and that the workers are not seen as a challenge, but as an asset in their organizations. We are also collaborating with some uh, successful cases in other parts of the world so that we can prove this in Latin America and the Caribbean as Specialiterme in uh, in Spain or the Rabbit method in Israel. So we are changing stereotypes and cultural aspects to be able to uh, work with different uh, nervous diverse people. So we have been boosting innovation every day to be able to improve life without anybody being left behind. But to be able to understand in a more concrete way in how we are going to work with all of this, we are going to hear today very important panelists that I am going to introduce you. First, we have Alejandra León from Pacto de Productividad in Colombia. She is, has a master's degree in, a, in a human rights, and she has a lot of experience nationally and internationally. She has worked with different organizations of people with disabilities and in the management of programs that are related to this topic. So thank you very much, Alejandra. Go ahead. Thank you, Carolina, for that introduction. Thank you for the invitation of CIRA project. Today, I'm going to talk about the business program for inclusion of disabled people in factory productivity. I would like to first share a video. Las barreras de acceso a la educación regular. The access barriers of education that usually are faced for disabled people and the lack of knowledge for business people, the different obstacles of public spaces, communication, 
the absence of articulation between who intervened the process of inclusion was some of the reasons that encouraged the creation of this program for disabled people in Pacto de Perutila in the year 2009. The program stemmed from an international cooperation project co-financed by the International Development Bank and partner entities from Colombia. Fundación Corona, the Work Ministry, the National Learning Service, the International Cooperation Agency in different cities, CAFAN in Bogota, Confanelco in Antioquia, among others. The purpose of its first phase as a project was generating in a participative way an intervention model that would allow to articulate and qualify the role of the different social actors from the inclusion ecosystem for people with disabilities. During that period, this program advanced different actions that allowed them to know and close the different gaps between disabled candidates and the companies that may give them an opportunity and the time to take advantage of the benefits of inclusion. By means of these actions between the years 2010 and 2014, other results like accompanying the formation and training for more than a thousand people. The workplacement of 613 workers in 192 companies. More than 3,000 collaborators in companies and the technical qualification of 165 professionals. From the year 2014, once created this model for inclusion for disabled people, Pacto de Productividad or Productivity Pact, has strongly seen its implementation thanks to the commitment of the different social stakeholders that inside directly or indirectly. This model becomes a tool that provides guidelines for each of the stakeholders for understand and optimize their role, having into account the different rights the UN presents. In the last years, Pacto de Productividad is a technical reference for inclusion in Colombia. This has allowed to generate capacities for entities in different government agencies and this contributes to the design and implementation of their own programs and institutional policies for work inclusion. These actions have had an impact because the development of joint projects that allows them to have and address different territories in Colombia. We also have a virtual school that over 280 companies have received training. And according to this model, currently, the program is positioned itself as a reference in Latin America. From 2018, have managed to communicate different tools for different members for different countries and also participate actively in other programs and international networks, networks that work for people with disabilities. And from 2020, the program starts an exercise of replicating its model in Santiago, Chile. And it expects to take this same initiative in other territories of the same region. Well, with that video, I hope that you have a general overview of Pacto de Productividad. And on this slide, I would like to emphasize the essence of this program. For us, the essence of the program is enabling technically and provide accompaniment. So we leave these skills installed so that these entities can achieve the access and promotion of disabled people in regular services that you would offer any citizen in our country. This means we do not encourage parallel routes and parallel worlds. What we want is that every entity 
that are part of this work ecosystem can work articulately. And they can complement each other so we can work together and guarantee the services that disabled people need. And of course, this would mark also in its essence of Pacto de Productividad to have an impact on public and institutional policies. In the innovation aspects of the program, I would highlight that we definitely were very respectful in arriving to a country where there were already some practices in place. And along with those same institutions that sometimes strengthen the necessities, not from the workplace, but from other sectors, they have had to set programs of work inclusion for disabled people. And with those, we started building that model that we wanted, that we envisioned for Colombia. That what, what is work inclusion in the country? Different organizations participated, public entities, job centers, different agencies, and other organizations that were part of this ecosystem in the four cities that we started our program. This model also has some innovative aspects. It has sustainability and replication features. And we were talking about this and that we were, we were able to do this in other cities. If we're going to look at the impact of Pacto de Productividad, I would indicate four moments. The first is everything that this program has done in terms of knowledge and transference of concepts. We are very convinced that as different public entities know their role and their workers are trained and the efforts of these entities are going to show exponential results in terms of potential workers. And for us to have worked with the job public service and with the learning national service Sena, I think these have been the greatest impacts that Pacto de Productividad has had. And of course, we started working with over 40 service entities from different services, education, health, rehabilitation, in order that they could address better the processes that they would offer disabled people with organizations with disabled people organized by them so they can have an impact on public policies and with companies to generate good practices. I was also commenting that other impacts are related to the fact that this model was a base for other models. For example, the model for inclusive employment for vulnerable populations in the country and with different learning services. The transfers of knowledge we have made to specific entities in cities like Nicaragua, El Salvador, and other cities. And in, in time, we will do our contribution in Santiago de Chile. And finally, the success factors that this program has is the backing of organizations for people with disabilities that we have worked with from the beginning, the respect and recognition of others' experiences and the appropriation that public entities have done in terms of training for work and work intermediation. All of this has made that in Colombia we've generated a work based on values like transference and trust. The program is financed by Fundación Corona and Fundación Saldarriaga Concha, among others. Also with entities with public bodies and other organizations. Thank you for your attention. I would like to remind you that we have a virtual classroom specialized in work inclusion. And I think that is one of the next steps that we want to boost in the region. Thus, the necessity of widening the strengthening processes of the technical aspects of leaders and different disabled people so that them with that technical knowledge can actually have a greater impact in public policies. So thank you, everyone.
Muchísimas gracias, Alejandra, por la interesante. Thank you very much, Alejandra, for your interesting presentation and that video that showed the trajectory of Pacto in Colombia. So now I want to invite Ingrid Rojas from Pacto de Productividad Chile. She's a, an engineer, she's a, an ontological coach, and she has a lot of experience consulting for private and public companies in strategy and organizational strategy. And she's now in charge of leading Pacto de Productividad in Chile, as Alejandra mentioned, is mentioning, it's, um, it's adapting the model to the Chilean um, way. So thank you very much. Ingrid. Thank you very much, Carolina, for your great presentation, and Alejandra as well for introducing what productivity, Pacto de Productividad is. This started in Colombia. And I wanted to show you how we have seen the process here in Chile. The first thing is that we have some definitions, some key definitions and what this implementation has been about in this last years, year and a half, and also the lessons learned. And that still in the last part of the year, we are in the process on for learning it. So uh, the first thing is to see what we want to do. We want to have a collaborative model for inclusion for um, for people that have, that have disabilities to ensure the uh, the inclusion of them in the work market and how. As Alejandra said, we want to generate a platform, public and private platform in all of the different um, parts that are all part of the inclusion. So this project here in Chile, it started in 2020 and its first stage finishes on 2022. And the investment of the project is $2.4 million. The important milestones of what we have been doing up to now related to the stages is that, first of all, the first stage, um, we needed to uh, have the governance of the project that was translated into the consultative process. And I am going to show which who are the, the actors and that fundamentally this has as an, uh, as an objective to generate this alliance between the private and the public sector. And then it generates a diagnosis of the current situation in Chile related to work inclusion to be able to assess what was the adaptability level that we had and that we were bringing from Colombia. After that, from the adjustments we made in the model, we were able to generate a transference process for the relevant players of work inclusion. And mainly in the stage that we're at now, this model, the accompanying of this same players in inclusion and in training for the inclusive work. And another important point, which is a sub project of the project of the pact here in Chile is to be able to identify technologies to foster inclusion in the companies and also to strengthen the people that have disabilities and that are already working in the companies through innovation. So who are part of this governance? In Chile, we have very important players, differently to Colombia in the city, we have a disability service that represents the voice of the state in this topic. With Zohavi Senadis, that is part of the Ministry of Social Development, that is also part of the Consultative uh, Council of Productivity. We have the SENSE, the National Service of uh, Training and Employment, that in Chile it has the mandate to, in the case of, of uh, inclusion, it has to facilitate the processes through the OTEX and through the OMIN and the other offices. Um, we also want to generate policies for um, for the work with the municipalities. We also have civil uh, services. We have Chile Valora in charge of the of the certification, and uh, we're also talking about the uh, the new law that was uh, passed. We have the rate as well, the CPC. We have PF Foods. 
at the level of the civil society, we also have other work that we're doing. And of course, the Foundation Descubreme, uh, always backed up by the bid and also by the mentoring of uh, Corona Foundation and Pacto Productiva Colombia that have been with us throughout all this time. In the diagnosis that we carried out last year, the most important findings were um, to confirm, and I would say that the other most important thing was to confirm that through them, the players, confirm the low participation and representativity of the people uh, with disabilities, the lack of preparation of the companies and the lack of articulation amongst the different um, processes and the training. So what is also interesting about this diagnosis that was done with the players of the system, we had 11 folks focal points, and we uh, checked many organizations. At the level of transference that we finished last year, I would say that the most important thing, the most challenging part was to adjust the methodology because, um, well, the program Impacto Colombia was uh, proposing to have this methodology in a presential way. And because of the pandemic, we needed to adjust this methodology to a transference, a virtual transference and synchronic um, way. So this allowed us to develop some benefits with the people with disabilities because we were able to have more access. We were also able to have uh, um, organizations in uh, farther away places that with virtuality it allowed for us to to participate but that meant a big gap in terms of uh, literacy because we also realized that there were some barriers so that people with disabilities could have could go on the program in this way in this virtual way and always in the transference process uh, an ongoing challenge, it has been to adjust the model to the Chilean reality. So in the pilot process that we saw, we were permanently checking what would be the main adaptations culturally related to the law 2115 and all of that, being able to incorporate this in the transference process. What are the next steps um, well, we want to continue with this uh, phase of accompanying and advance in what we have committed with the bid, facilitate the implementation that aim towards strengthening uh, inclusion. And uh, in there we have an alliance, a project with the bid backed up by the bid and zero project that is called ICP, Innovation for Inclusion, where we also are uh, boosting three initiatives innovative initiatives from different parts of the world so that we can strengthen the inclusion of people in the different organizations. And we are also implementing a study on the assessment of the uh, uh, 21,000 uh, law. And we hope that this is also a complement for the mandate that we have for the three annual uh, assessment that they carry out. And uh, well, finally, I think that one of the most important points, uh, the critical points has been the implementation and the articulation, public, private public articulation. We need to understand that this is a process that at the beginning, it wasn't easy because it means that you had to generate trust and you need to have a common purpose that we have evaluating and that we have been assessing. So I think that today we have a huge commitment from the players that participate and that are uh, part of the pact. And for that, I think that an important part of everything has been to, to be committed in terms of the role that we assume and also consider your own characteristics and your own uh, guidelines. Another point that is very important and that I, I also think that it is important because of the pandemic and the social political aspect in Chile, um, I think that it has been very important to actually read the context, be flexible, prioritize, and also um, with the bid, be able to be flexible in relation to how this process is um, made up. 
and we have detected different needs that are per that are from the process itself and finally i wanted to refer to the people with disabilities that are protagonists of the process and um, they have been very affected by the inclusion i read a study that the hirings have been reduced in a 30 percent of the people that need to comply with the, this quota in, in Chile. And that is a concern. Undoubtedly, we need to be paying more attention to needs and to see how we can incorporate all of this in the process. Um, our challenges, our challenge is to uh, keep on ad adapting the model uh, to the Chilean reality keep on advancing in this nationally speaking and internationally speaking together with Pacto Colombia as the opportunities show up. We need to develop a sustainability model in the long term and we also want to have installed capacity. So that's our challenges. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Ingrid. Tremendo desafío. Very big challenges to have started this beautiful project in the midst of the pandemic. So congratulations. Now we're going to go to Spain. And with us, we have Silvia Muñoz. Silvia has a degree in psychology from Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, an expert in job guidance of the Complutense University in Madrid also. She has a master's in public health and another degree in design for everyone. She works with the Ministry of Territorial Policy and Public Function. So thank you so much for being with us, Silvia. Welcome. Muchas gracias, Carolina, por, thank you so much, Carolina, for that introduction. I'm going to share with you the project of available public employment from Confederación Plena Inclusión from Spain. Plena Inclusión España is an organization that represents people with intellectual disabilities in Spain in our country from 1964. We have presence in all regions and provinces in Spain and it's the reference NGO for intellectual disability. We have and support around 235,000 families, 140,000 people with intellectual disability, and we have representation in all the national territory. This project starts in the year 2011, in which Spain presents a legislation with including some articles for disabled people. This is one of the measures that were carried out and it has to do with access of, to public employment in the public sector. So in this legislation, we have we go from having a 5% financing, that was the, the quota so far, and it's widening up to 7%. That 2% additional is a specific reserve specifically for intellectually disabled people because it identifies the specific needs that these people have. It's a great opportunity for access to a stable job and well paid for people with intellectual disability. In my presentation, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to share what have been the steps and the phases of support that we presented when setting forth these processes of access to public jobs for people with intellectual disabilities. This project stems from the collaboration of Plena Inclusión with the Ministry of Public and Territorial Policies, that is the ministry that takes care of all the public callings for public jobs for general administration of the state in our country, in Spain. And within this collaboration, we have a project 
and has different phases, different stages. And from Plena Inclusión, what we do is that we do an accompaniment to the ministry in all the calling, since the moment they decide to present the calling up to the moment that the person gets incorporated in the work position. One of the first steps that we give within all this accompanying process is the analysis of the job position and what are the preparations for this. In this job position, we identify what are the tasks, what are the conditions of the post. And this analysis is good for us so that we can do an adaptation and validation of these topics that are going to work for people with intellectual disabilities can prepare the exam that they have to approve so they can access public employment in Spain, as in many other countries. The process to access a public post in public administration has a process of an exam in a posterior stage uh, regarding merits. And thanks to that analysis, we can validate and we can do an easy reading. And after that, public administration validates this list uh, regarding that it is correct. We also have achieved some agreements with the ministry to determine the kind of exam, the kind of test that was to be carried out. And from the first moment, we thought that it would be interesting uh, a test kind of exam instead of a practical test, because in the practical test were more variables that were more difficult to control. While in the test kind of exam, it was more controllable. And if we take into account that some of these open calls were over 50,000 people, it's more difficult to carry out a practical test. It's also adapted other materials that are necessary in the whole process. And we provide the easy reading for this. For example, in the moment that the open call is presented, examples and exercises of the exam so the people preparing for the post can practice and they can try out their knowledge. We have a model of inscription of application form. And other things that we carry out in planning inclusion, and that's outside the strict collaboration with the ministry, is the support of the different entities, support of people with intellectual disabilities, and support for their families. And it's very interesting in how in this way of access to employment, families are very interested in their children or siblings can access the job market in comparison with other ways of accessing the job that don't take into account the different the different families and that have other social aspects than public employment so we provide a stronger support from the families so the support that we provide is that we spread training material we offer them for free online. We also offer these exercises and exam examples. We do this through an online training platform. And it was very interesting to see how intellectually disabled people uh, were interacting with this platform. And in the last few years, we've developed an app that's available on the different platforms and that's the way that we have now to communicate with the different stakeholders and communicate information plus every time that there's an open call we spread information regarding the process because they are usually long and complex processes so we provide information through our websites and our social media to try and reach every person that might be interested in this open call. So we also solve different questions and inquiries, and we are a support 
even though the, the ministry has its own channels, we do support uh, the persons trying to reach this post so that we can move these questions and inquiries. We have this project has an internal level and relationship with the ministry and with the ministry also we have meetings where we present improvements to this process. I wanted to share some of the results that we had along the years. As I said before, in 2012, 54 job posts were presented. And you can see here the evolution and the numbers. Even in the years when we had an economical crisis, more open calls have been made. And we can see, for example, 2018, the numbers. We've achieved 75% of approval and we've improved the results of the exams. We've done different actions besides all the development that we've done. We did a notebook on good practices. We did a protocol for different public administrations. We want to provide open calls so that they know how to do it. We've done different sessions and an award system for public administrations that we consider that they were doing a good job in promoting public employment for people with intellectual disabilities. We also have received funding from private entities and from the European Union. And last, I wanted to share the challenges that we have with this project. Although it's an important opportunity and we see that we have more opportunities, it is necessary that the public employment reaches people with higher needs of support. There are people that may have reading and writing issues. They are being left out of these processes. It's also important to diversify the profiles and the different tasks so that each autonomous community in all regions in Spain can also promote these open calls. And our wish is that we can have a larger quota for this kind of disability. So that's our project. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Silvia. We are going to go back to Chile now because we have Maria Luisa Ior. She is a sub-manager of uh, attention in the Chilean Chamber of Construction. Maria Luisa is a social worker from Universidad Católica de Valparaíso, and she has been specialized in inclusion for people with disabilities, health, social security, and responsibility, social responsibility. From her work, she defines the policies of inclusion of workers that have some kind of a disability because of work-related accidents or work diseases. She's also a founder of the RAIN Association. This is uh, an inclusive uh, organization of companies uh, that are inclusive. It's an organization of inclusive companies. Thank you very much, Carolina, for your presentation. I am Maria Luisa, and I work in Mutual de Seguridad from the Chilean Chamber of Construction. And I want to tell you about all of the policies that we have developing and all of the programs that we have for people with disabilities. We are a mutual of security. We manage the law 16,744, and we belong to the security system in Chile. We contribute to the security of, of the workers. That's our reason of being. And our objective is to provide protection to the workers. What we want to do is that with the preventive measures, these accidents do not take place. And if they do take place and the worker has a problem, we need to support the inclusion process along with the company and the family of the worker for that to be satisfactory. In this sense, we need to ensure an inclusion process for our workers. 
and we also need to make sure that they can go back to uh, participation, social and uh, and work participation. We have been uh, working on an integral process of health, which is called uh, MICE. This is going to cover the different areas, uh, medical aspects and psychosocial aspects, so that we can include them in the work area, increasing their uh, quality of life and also uh, making um, an improvement in the, in the social cohesion of the country. The uh, this capacity is also the, the disabilities are related also by social factor. So we need to have different areas of action, rehabilitation, ab uh, social and psycho psychological habilitation, work inclusion, social inclusion in the families. So the MAIS considers this problem to be resolved by the link of people with the opportunities of their surrounding in the private, public and civil society areas. Our uh, work inclusion line for people with disabilities has two objectives. We want to foster an inclusive culture of the companies, which is tremendously important when we talk about uh, work inclusion, promote reactivation of people with disabilities in two areas, the depending and the independent line independent line and in three moments in the return to their or the original company in their same work uh, relocation in the same organization in another workplace or a uh, relocation in another company and even in another work but and uh, before we need a training of course so our profile of workers is uh, people that have a disability because of an accident or a work-related disease. In our lines of work, what we do specifically with the companies is that we support in the inclusion process through uh, orientation, through accompanying intermediation. And uh, with the users, we develop uh, work inclusion processes that are centered in the psychosocial habilitation orientation and accompanying in their redefinition of the work plan, which is very important in the increase of the degree of employability and the articulation of the pro-employment network. We have an approach that is international, of course. When we talk about uh, specific alliances and management of networks in the private world, we are going to be connected, first of all, to the adhere uh, companies of this uh, Mutual de Seguridad. This is like a social security. Um, the associations, the networks, uh, the networks of work, um, inclusion areas, the companies, intermediation, work intermediation, and also offices of uh, disability of the municipalities, foundations, public universities, and also community, um, community organizations. In terms of the scopes, I want to tell you about the impact of hiring in our return to work program. We have had about an 80% of uh, of people that go back to work successfully in the same country related to a universe of 2,700 people annually. So we provide support in the reactivation and relocations. We got to a level of uh, intermediation that was successful in at least an 80% of the cases. When we talk about uh, cultural transformation, also in this last decade, we have been able to get to up to 2,800 uh, companies annually through the realization of processes of uh, work intermediation along with the events, um, leaflets, publications, etc. Now in the pandemic and, uh, and, and all of these times we're having webinars, cycles of webinars for training in the companies in the topic related to uh, the inclusion of people with disabilities. The impact at the, at the user level, user level is satisfactory. It has shown us that today the users really value our help with a 90% of satisfaction. And when we talk about innovation, I think that the main thing that we need to focus on is the subject of right based on the rehabilitation, incorporating from the uh, first 
part, the voice of the person is specifically in the solutions and the support to their processes and their, their problems. The uh, psychosocial uh, part is very important for the intervention. We not just talk about work inclusion, we're talking about social, uh, social labor uh, work inclusion. We support that and we also support the family relationships. So the support networks are going to allow you to incorporate, to be incorporated. So we have been working uh, with the different alternatives that exist in the country. The mutual of security is a technical reference that through the program Return to Work inspires the development of a new normative, a new regulation that will um, make a mandatory the return to the companies to people that have suffered um, a, a disease or a work-related accident and they are disabled because of that. So I would say that this model is socially responsible because it covers uh, all of the actors. So it is a win-win situation and that for the users and for the companies as well, according to the new law. 16,744, they're definitely inserted in the social security. And that is going to give us an important base for the development of our model. This is also going to solve problems that are related to uh, re-entering and chronification of cases. The legislation in Chile from the law 20,422 20, has had to support all of this model, the work in the network and the international experience the uh, focus of, of right and the integral process with a personalized um, approach. About financing, this is done uh, through the law 16,744. The sustainability in time is going to be even given by this new regulation that we are very proud of. Uh, when we that we have inspired it, and in the challenges we have been uh, protocolizing all of this in such a way that we can dispose of this uh, and uh, share it with the different networks that need it. We are going to be able to strengthen our work and to us uh, to keep on working with our health equipments, with our health uh, teams. We have the rain. Um, the RAIN network, which is the network of inclusive companies. And we also are sponsored by the SOFOFA, the IOL, Chile Valora, and Productividad Pacto. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Maria Luisa. Bueno, y finalmente, pero Thank no. Thank you very much, Maria Luisa. We have Francis Ventura Rival. He's a director of inter interculturality and social cohesion of the La Caiche Foundation from Spain. Francis is, uh, has a, a, a psychology degree and also an economy and uh, company management and commercial management. And he's going to be sharing some of his experience. Thank you very much, Francis, go ahead. Hola, buenas tardes. Bueno, Good gracias. afternoon. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. And I want to thank the foundation and the Descubreme organization for inviting me and their trust on La Caixa for strengthening the alliance in uh, inclusive employment. So first of all, I would like to introduce La Caixa that is in Barcelona and is a result of the transformation of the pension fund and Baleares that was created in 2004. And after the long crisis of 2008 um, made this uh, Caixa to uh, separate their functions. And in 2014, after Caixa Bank, which is um, leader now in Spain, La Caixa was uh, turned into the foundation La Caixa. So uh, through the criteria Caixa, we uh, manage assets of 20 million euros in different banks, industrial companies, service companies, um, real estate agencies that are the ones that generate through the results and dividends. They allow for the foundation to be able to invest each year uh, 500 uh, million euros, uh, 5 million euros in, in this kind of things. 
this is one of the main five in the world. So as I was saying before, the budget of La Caixa is about 5 million euros and the rest is for social programs amongst which we have the rest of the of the budgets that are destined for culture, science, education, grants and research in education. Well, one of the main programs, uh, the, the social programs is Incorpora, which is social. Uh, this started in 2006 and its objective is to facilitate the access to work environment for people that have disabilities or uh, for people that have a risk in inclusion. The Incorpora program has two objectives. The main one is the accompanying and facilitating this access to the workplace to people with disabilities. And the second objective is related to companies incorporating these people to their uh, work environments. This is social corporate responsibility, but it's also because they're able to trust in the talent of these people. If we do not formulate the second objective with the companies, and if we do not understand that this program is a program that is a service for the companies, and if the professionals do not assume their responsibility in the companies, the first objective is never going to be complied with. All of the social programs have their so the reason for being, and they have a focus on one a person and collectives, and they incorporate as well this second objective, which is a program that ends up being a service for the companies. The Incorpora program is developed mainly in Spain, but it's also developed in Portugal, in Morocco, and in Poland and Hungary. It has two main elements, the innovative elements. The first one is um, the network. The La Caixa Foundation coordinates a total of 482 uh, social entities in Incorpora Network. So we uh, we organize this network so that they can work with our methodology. We are working about, we're talking about entities that work in the areas of addictions, in accompanying people that have been in jail. Um, also, they work with uh, women that have been victims of uh, violence, people with discapacities, uh, with disabilities, uh, sensorial, um, cognitive, and others. So we have certain different areas of fragility and from their expertise, expertise, they can help us in social and labor insertion. So you have a priority that is the prospection of companies and they're very good at accompanying people, but sometimes what is difficult is to access the company. So this program, what it's going to do is just to provide support and training for um, company prospection and to be able to offer this service to the companies, we need to work with them. So we cannot have 482 entities working with their own collectives and in an, individ in an individual way, we need to work together. The 482 entities are grouped in 24 territorial groups. So each one of the groups has a coordinator, which is the one that is going to foster and is going to ensure that the social activities of their group are going to work in a shared way. And they can share uh, work and training programs that are being um, shared so they can they can work together. In this 482 entities, we have 1,024 professional technicians, technicians that are um, all uh, prospectors and are the ones that are going to be in charge of making this connection with the companies and be able to get offers to identify those opportunities for these collectives. The second innovation factor is technology. The Incorpora project has developed a work platform that is uh, proper, proper 
entirety that has um, a work offer, we publish them and we share everything that we do. We do, do the follow-up. And well, definitely we are going to generate the indicators of follow-up and uh, that is going to allow us to monitor the processes and to generate knowledge for a continuous improvement. The companies, when we work with Incorpora, we always say everything that is uh, talked about in the platform is non-existent. So we need to work with the platform and it is the way to ensure this uh, work in the platform. We are going to leave it in, uh, in a document and we're going to trace all of the processes, the history, is going to be here with all of the companies that have worked in Incorpora from 2006 until 2021. So it's more than 61,000 companies that in one way, or in one moment or another, in, in a very specific or recurrent way, are going to hire professionals through the program in Incorpora. To be able to see the dimension and the results that are uh, that are here that we got in 2020, we uh, got this amount of insertions, 334,274. So we can see that it's growing from 2006 until the 34,000 that we had in 2020. Let's mention that year 2020 is where we had an insertion reduction and that's because of the pandemic, but we want to highlight that the reaction of the prospectors was optimum but because in March 2020, this was paralyzed because the whole economy was paralyzed. But in the month of June, July, we had identified even more niches, uh, work niches of uh, more social sanitary aspects of cleaning that generated a work inclusion that maybe before it was non-existent. So we are closing uh, June 2020, and we are already better and better than in the years without pandemic. So in here we can see how they are distributed, the, the more than 64,000 inclusions. This is for social exclusion. So people that are, are in jail, were in jail, uh, people that have uh, drug addictions, etc., And the rest of the people with some kind of disability, physical, psych psychological, mental, sensorial. So uh, almost a 42% is people with um, a disability, a physical disability. And here just to finish, because not the only indicator that we have is insertion, but we have quality indicators as well that are going to allow us. This is shared offers. So in 2019, if 44.7% of the offers were, uh, were shared, then in the year 2020, we are already in a 50 five percent more or less you can see it here on the screen we say shared because when a company identifies um an opportunity the best candidate is not going to be helped by them necessarily so we can achieve that each one of the groups is going to ensure the best service possible for each one of the companies that are trusting incorpora and the second indicator is the effectiveness in the uh, coverage so in 2019, we covered 66.7% of the candidates and in 2020, it uh, increased in a point. So 68% uh, of the offers of the offers were covered in, a, in an effective way through the Incorpora project. So it's very difficult to have a program such as this one and to be able to synthesize us and give more information. But I have tried to summarize the most important elements of the Incorpora program that has two elements that are innovative and basic, which is the work with the entities and also documenting absolutely all of the process to be able to manage this. And this ends up being a service that is necessary to have to offer the, the information and the opportunity to the people.
Bueno, muchísimas gracias por todas las interesantes. Thank you so much for all the interesting presentations. And because of time, we're running out of it. We're going to do a general question, and we will follow the same order of the presentations. So we will start with Alejandra. I would like to listen to your reflections and recommendations to strengthen the job insertion for people with disabilities that can sustain these jobs and hopefully develop some trajectories to create careers within organizations. How do you think that we can help accelerating this from happening, Alejandra? Well, Carolina, I think that we have to work with disabled people and also with companies and have a clarity that hiring is not including. And for this, we need to train people working for a company so that they know about job inclusion for people with disability, what this means, the reasonable adjustments, and that they have an advisory and a company process with specialized entities so that each company can have their own adjustment plan and can slowly implement the reasonable adjustment, adjustments in the different processes. Without implementing adjustments in these processes, we won't be able to guarantee the permanence and progress of people with disabilities in their careers. For people with disabilities, it's very important that the training processes they do correspond to their life projects. They don't train, they don't study what they they receive. They have to choose what they want because they can have the basic competences and the specific competence to compete in equality of conditions for all these job positions and enter the companies that actually value those competences, those skills and that professionalism that each person can have. So in that way, we could say that we've managed to achieve job inclusion further than just the hiring and that the person can remain and can ensure the improvement of the quality of life of this person. Thank you so much, Alejandra. Ingrid, what can you say from your experience in Chile? Well, first of all, I agree with Alejandra and to complement her reflection, the first thing is to consider disabled people as leading characters of this process, with which design the programs themselves, all the training programs. I think that there's topic that we could detect, as I mentioned, about transference and adaptation from presence and virtual. And I think they've done a great job in digital availability. And along that line are very positive things. And we need to keep working with the different training institutions, universities, and appeal to them to create training programs regarding this same line. And companies also, along with disabled people, they should design training and development programs. As Alejandra said, it's not enough to include, and that's a huge step, that's the first step. But beyond that, I think that for this to be sustainable, there should be development programs within the organizations, and that needs to be designed with the human factor and understanding that this is a transformation process. That That's on my end. Without a question, connectivity and social media are fundamental for today. And Silvia, from your experience, what can you share? Well, first of all, I agree absolutely with Ingrid and Alejandra and to contribute a, a, a different point of view. The research tells us the improvements that disabled people experience in, in, in getting a job are the same that non-disabled people. 
another important contribution is that a great indicator for future employment is that disabled people that can get a job while they are young. It's very important that Ford companies are aware of this and that programs are promoted to hire young people so that they can develop their careers in the future. From Plena Inclusion, and as a European project, we did an, a research project with the university and we identified that disabled people contribute within the companies, in diverse companies, we can say that they have a better work climate, they are highly motivated with their jobs and that makes them great workers. All those skills are properly worked and I think that it is interesting that the companies can get to know that. And along the line of training that the previous speakers indicated, I think it's very important that from states, from different governments, provide training and adapted training for disabled people when addressing the job market, like digitalization and sustainable economy, circular economy. I think it's very important that disabled people and also have access to that kind of training because that is the those are the jobs for the future and this way we can contribute for them to be workers from the future thank you gracias silvia eh, bueno thank maria you, silvia now we go with maria luisa you are working with people have unfortunately um, a disability as a consequence of a job of a work accident. And that imposes additional challenges. What can you share about this with what you were saying about reincorporating these, these workers and that sustainability? I agree with what my partners have said. We have lived this all this time that we've worked with disabled people that they actually do a job and then they self-sabotage. Inclusion process is very important. And from there, rehabilitation programs are the support, the works with the families of people with disabilities is also very important. And from there, different companies need to ask for accompaniment within a, a, any foundation, any organization that can advise them on how to strengthen the circles of people with disabilities, because once you do the work in mediation, you provide a workshop to the employer, to the co-workers, and that is not enough. Along time, new issues are presented, and those new issues need to be addressed to achieve the sustainability in time, and that work that has been so difficult to achieve. So I would say that training is very important. The technical aspect is very relevant. The, the adaptive process is also is another 50% and you don't need to cast that away. Thank you so much. And finally, Francis, if you can share with us your experience in an institution that has such a long trajectory along this, the lines of social responsibility. What can you tell us? Okay, um, achieving a real insertion, I would say that it is something that is related to a concept. So from the moment that the program incorporates, what we wanna do is not work insertion from the social responsibility of the company but uh in here we are related to the human resources department their mission is to cover the different positions work positions that are available so this human resources department should um trust incorpora because they know that incorpora is going to offer good candidates so i would say that the guarantee is going to be looked for through the same methodology i have talked about technology i have talked about 
um, what we have been doing. So with this technology, what we do is that we achieve that the company is going to fill their vacancies um, with the best candidates possible, and they incorporate this candidate not as a candidate that is in an exclusion situation and then it's help, but as the best candidate for the position. We have testimonies from uh, directors from companies that say that uh, being in the candidate from in the incorporation candidate, not uh, just because they fulfill the competencies that are needed for the position, but that candidate is going to improve the uh, the whole environment of the organization. It's a candidate that has a history that is going to make the environment more human. So when the company um, hires an incorporate candidate, they're hiring them because they're filling the position the best way possible. The, the incorporate technician is, uh, is put in there after a prospection of the company. So the, what we do is that we inspect the companies. So the the different companies that we have in our surroundings and uh, we sell the program in Corcora so that they can trust us and on the other hand the program has an office from which what we want to do is to make big agreements with big companies that have hundreds of uh, job positions so for example Carrefour which is a uh, uh, one of these big supermarkets or big athlon or uh, hotels and many, many other big companies. So we close agreements with the human resources companies so that in the different centers that we can have in the different provinces through this agreement, we can facilitate that the person can go to the center and based on this agreement, they can uh, facilitate the uh, the work and the, this person going into this company. So the methodology is important. We need to understand that the Incorpora program wants to offer a solution. We need to offer a facilitation of uh, the work, the search. It's a, it's a service that we provide to the companies and we need to be efficient and we need to be uh, competent as well. Almost a 9% of the contracts and the incorpora contracts are indefinite. And we follow the same statistics as the work market in, in Spain. We work with uh, vulnerable uh, groups and we are in a nine point. So the contracts are aligned. We have a, about the same percentage of indefinite uh, work contracts. Well, thank you so much once again for everyone for being with us today. It's an interesting panel and that they were able to share their learnings and the big challenges that we have ahead of us. And for that, the invitation is that we can all keep contributing to these virtuous alliances to encourage and promote job inclusion that's sustainable and inequality inclusion for disabled people.